This is an Alec Jackson. It's got steel head iron. There you go. Obviously, and this one's in silver. And it's a size 3. Now, it's a very strong hook. Excellent hook. You do get them, obviously, all the sizes. But as well, you get the different diameters. You get a lighter wire hook as well. So, depending on the depth and how you want the fly to sit, depends on the hook they're using, obviously. The heavy hook is very good for the heavier water. And if you want it to sit well, it's entirely up to yourself. But tie the green spay. Thread I'm going to be using is the chartreuse 8O and uni thread. And we start at about say a mil or two, a couple of mil anyway from the eye. And then I'm going to take the thread down. Now best to tie in the tag, which I like to do on the way down. This is a fine or a small oval tinsel. I'm just going to catch this on the side. Now, to form the eye, what, what happens with this this hook is basically the, the, the iron or the, the wire is bent round to form the eye and it tapers off. This is where I'm tying in this the tinsel so that it fills that space and takes a step out. Now, I'm going to carry one down, keeping this nice and tight and on the side of the hook. I'm just going to go slightly by the point of the hook to check my distance. Keep going. Now bring the thread turns back up to the point. So you're looking, depends, I mean, five, six, seven turns or so with the tinsel. As long as you're doing a turn in front of the other, it should be nice and tight. This point here. Now, cross your thread. Now what I do is I make sure this catches on the side and I pull it so it's in line or just underneath the oval tinsel which was in the way down. This will make everything nice and smooth and nice and tight. Now I'm going to take my time and go back up. This makes for a much smoother body if you take your time and do it at this point, you'll you'll get the tinsel will sit fine for you. I'll never you know these lumps and bumps that you don't like to see. And then take away. And if you look you'll see everything's nice and smooth and the the actual space or the step from the bent wire has been taken away with the oval tinsel so it's really nice and smooth. Then I've got some small silver wire. And we tie this in the way down, just like I did at the first with the oval tinsel. Again, nice and tight. So come right up against the tag. Then I'm going to use this is a rather large green holographic. This is by UTC. You could use a plain tinsel if you want. Now we tie this a full length of the body and then bring the thread turns all the way up. Basically tying in your tinsel. And then bring your tinsel all the way up. Now you could use the oval tinsel as a rib. I prefer the wire, it's much stronger. Now if you look, once I've finished this, you'll see how smooth that is. Just because of, it, because of the way I tied it, I end up with a lovely, a nice smooth body. With no lumps or bumps on it. And then, straight turn it first with the wire. And then rib your fly all the way up. I usually bring it straight up and put a 90 degree bend into the wire. This will make sure that the turns are nice and tight. And then back up, making sure that's tied in. Bend and break away your wire. 
there we are, that's your body and your tag done. Everyone's really nice and tight. Then I've got some this is crystal flash, this is the micro stuff and chartreuse. Now I've got about four strands here. Just want it to basically the, the back of the hook and then the two or three turns down, fold it, two or three turns back up, trim it the same length. And that's basically your underwing. In this case it's some um, this is chartreuse, Arctic Fox. So you see it's nice and bright. And basically I bring it out so the ends start to line up. You you'll see in if you bring it sort of 90 degrees from the skin, it starts to line up a bit better. And then take it away from the skin and then trim. Just come in like that. Normally what I do is just make sure the ends are lined up. Or close anyway. Don't have to be exact. I just want it so you get a nice, nice taper. Look at the length you want. Now just to the back of the hook, just by the back and then you can come in and tie it down a good few turns now, I've waxed the thread so there's plenty of grip there and then take away the excess and make sure you wax your thread gives you that wee bit of extra grip Especially when you go to wind something onto this, you'll find that anything will sit much better if you do that. Now the first the hackle I'm going to put on here, and you could there's lots of spay hackles out there, lots of hackles. Now this is the easiest one to find. This is a looks quite dark. It's a like a green highlander or a dark highlander, as I would call it, a golden pheasant breast. Now it's been dyed. You can see here. There's a the colour there. The natural colour of this would be red. Uh, you could, and the smaller flies, use the rump. As you can see, that's a nicer green. But in this fly, I'm just going to use the actual breast of red, or dyed green anyway. Now you could leave some of the, the softer fibres at the bottom in, which I'm going to do. Let me just take away, pull away the fibres to open that out, and use the rest as a, a base of a grip, of the, so you can grip the hackle. We tie this in by the tip, so pull back the fibres to reveal the tip of the feather and then come in and do it two or three turns down towards the eye and then keeping hold of the tip, fold it back a few turns over it and then trim it away and it's a matter of folding the hackle, just draw it through your fingers now what you may find is you may get too much fibres at the final turn or so you could always take the far side of this, this side here, I can usually what I do is like to take that away so you can see that it just that it thins it out slightly because another hackle going on here is a, is a basically a like a flank, a mallard flank dyed chartreuse And then you just wind it round. Cross your thread. Nice and tight. Make sure this is tied down. Again, more wax. And trim away. At this point, what I'm going to do is, I've got a fine brush here that I'm going to brush the fibres. Just to see how they're sitting. Okay. And then I'm going to end up with this is my wild flank dyed chartreuse. Again, I'm only going to use the one side of this. The first thing I do is remove some of the rubbish from the bottom, but keep some of it so that you can use that as your grip. The far side in this case, as I wind away from myself, I take it off. Again, I'm going to tie this in by the tip. Make sure you watch your thread. Fold it back. Come back up. Down again, ready to catch it in. 
and they break the tip off. And then we'll wind our, our hackle one turn in front of the other. Now, you don't have to go crazy. You don't have to use it all. Have a look at what it looks like. Depends on how thick the fibre is. Uh, let's just see how it goes. I think that looks about right. Come up against it. Come round. Tie it down. Nice and tight. Now, there's just a wee bit too much. The very last turn there, in my view, there's, it's twisted round. Now, you can see, I'll show you, as I'll take this back, it's best to take it back. These here, see these fibres? And we take them away, because I don't need them. They're just kind of spoiling the, the finish of the fly. And there's times you may have to do that and go back, and that's what I'm doing, so. Uh, basically then, once you catch in your hackle again, have another look, and then trim. Tidy up, make sure you put the wax on your thread. Now when you finish off with some jungle cock, a couple of fibres that I don't like either, so I'm just going to take these out. Look at your flies and see how it's sitting. It's always nice to get your fly sitting the way you like. Now I've got a couple of jungle cork eyes. Now you could go quite small. You can different ways of tying these in. Up into the wing, down into the throw it. Uh, Spay style, I mean really most of the spays don't have jungle cork. Uh, a dropped hack or a dropped jungle cork usually you'll see in D patterns. But just going to lift these into the wing, make sure they're the right length. Come round with two or three turns. Make sure you're sitting properly, sitting up in. Looks okay. Again, I'm going to make sure I wax my thread and then come down, tying these in. Now, always take your time, just allow thread turns to catch the feathers. And then I'm going to fold them back for security. The fly will last longer if you do that. Tidy the head up. And then I can break them away. Come in and whip finish. Now, the head being chartreuse is up to yourself. You could leave it. Or you can make it go black. Or have both. Which I sometimes like to do. So you can see the, the dressing. Now I'm just going to bring out some of the fibre so you can see how it's going to sit. A fly to me always looks better once it's had a, a swim in the, the river. Just sits, it pulls in, the right shapes there. Now what I'm going to do here is just to give it a mix of both. I've got some black thread. I'm just going to put a, a black bar in the centre. Remove the base piece. Just basically tying on the thread and tying off. One, two, three. Now I've waxed this thread so it gives me the grip. And trim away your thread. There you go. Now that's the fun of tying your own flies. You can add wee, wee bits to the fly. Now, first thing I like to do is always I like the super glue first. All the way around. I mean, you've got to be careful. Don't touch any of the hackles or the fibres. This will seal everything, fill in the wee spaces and it sets extremely quick. So what you'll end up with is a right solid head. So you will. And once that dries, and as I say it does dry quick, you can come over a couple of coats of varnish and that's it. Thank you.